I just wanted to say um, with Hurricane Mitch, I mean, this was an incredible development. We had been working uh, with the farmer to farmer movement for over 20 years, and, and nobody took us seriously except for the farmers. You know, none of the agricultural extension programs, um, certainly none of the uh, bilateral aid programs, none of the international agricultural research centers. You know, we were crazy, you know, talking about sustainable agriculture or organic agriculture. Yes? Sev oh, geez. <laughs> Se uh, 90, <laughs> no, 98. Okay, so this is actually. Yeah, so it's 98. <coughs> um, and it just so happens I was doing my dissertation when it hit, right? And I thought, oh, there goes my dissertation. But we kind of turned it around, as if my dissertation mattered at that point. But um, so it was called the Hurricane of the Poor because. It seemed to have impacted the poor more than anybody else. You can see the numbers there. It was pretty devastating. This is that guy's land. Remember the guy in the film? He was, you know, just sort of devastated and he had nowhere to plant. That's why, you know, it's all rocks and, and whatnot. That guy ended up being killed in a machete fight about two months after this film. Um, a drunken machete fight. And he was one of the casualties of Hurricane Mitch. Probably about, in the study, you know, we had 2,000 farmers. Half of them were sustainable farmers and half of them were conventional farmers. Of the conventional farmers, probably about half of those then switched over and began to farm using these techniques. The other half left farming and it, because it was over. I mean, this guy, what was he supposed to do? It was over for him. That's it, you know. There's no more land. You know, the Nicaraguan land reform had long since passed. He had no chance of getting land. Um, there wasn't any work. And it, wasn't it was very sad and tragic, but it wasn't surprising that he gets killed in a machete fight because he probably didn't care anymore. Um, and he wasn't the only one to commit suicide. You know, I mean, basically it was an act of suicide. He was not the only one to commit suicide after Hurricane Mitch. Many people did. I mean this, I mean, here strong men have cried like babies. That was one of the things he said. He was talking about himself. That was it. Have I showed this slide before? No? Okay. So this is what happened with the study. We thought, look, a natural disaster like Hurricane Mitch is made up of basically two things. The event itself, in this case a hurricane, and the level of vulnerability of where the hurricane hits. If you're not vulnerable and the hurricane hits, then there's no disaster. Right? Then there's no disaster. No problem. It's just a, an event. It's a hazard, but there hasn't been a disaster. If you're highly vulnerable, like if you have no soil cover and a hurricane hits, then you have an extreme disaster. <coughs> Right, so the level of vulnerability determines the extent of the disaster. Then we said, well, if that's true, then the more sustainable you are, the less vulnerable you are. Or, the less vulnerable you are, the more sustainable you are. Right? Does that make sense? Okay, so that's what we said. So we said, that means, after all this time, we might be able to prove that we're actually more sustainable than conventional farmers. And the, the first reports were exactly that. No, 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 we're okay. Yeah. We're okay. These other guys have lost their farms, but we haven't. And then we realized that both vulnerability and sustainability has to do with resistance and resilience, like I talked about in the film. Right? Resistance to the impact of the event, and resilience is bouncing back afterwards. So we decided to measure it. We couldn't measure resilience because we didn't have the time, but we decided to measure resistance. So we did these paired observations between the sustainable and the conventional farms. And basically, we took the sustainable farms uh, from all the people who were in the, in the movement, right? And then looked at their neighbors. You know, they're all on the same hillside. The guy on the left has all these terraces, and he's got live barriers with plantain, and he's 
got a, uh, you can see he covers the ground with mulch and stuff. And the guy on the left basically had nothing, right? He did slash and burn. He used chemical inputs. Um, sometimes they had a few agroecological practices, but in general not. And so we, we measured the impact of the hurricane on these two farms. And it was a participatory action research project in that we, we used these, oops, these teams of technicians. The two women in the center are the technicians, and the two men on the side are the farmers, right? So we had these farmers and his technicians, and they carried out the study. And um, we had, I think, a hundred teams, a hundred teams, in, th in three different countries. Now, how do we do that? Well, basically, we had a bunch of meetings in Nicaragua, Honduras, and Guatemala with people in the movement. And they sort of confirmed our observations. Yes, no, we resisted the hurricane. And, well, what should we do? Well, everybody was talking about reconstruction. And they said, look, it doesn't make any sense at all to reconstruct conventionally. Because we'll be just as vulnerable then as we are now. What we need to do is reconstruct sustainably so that we'll be resistant to the next hurricane. And so this really was a political project because they said what we have to do is show that our agriculture is superior right, and that the funds for reconstruction, which are, we're supposedly going to pour in from Europe, um, will be invested in sustainable agriculture and not conventional agriculture. And they said we have to show that we can do it. It's not like they'd have to hire people to come and show how to reconstruct sustainably. We can do it. So let's, the study will show that, we can, that we're capable of doing that. So we ended up collaborating with about 40 different NGOs who work with the movement in the three, um, in the three countries. And so this is the research team. And you had uh, two promoters in the which are the, the campesino, campesino uh, sort of experiment or teachers, you know, extensionists who've been in the movement for a while, teach others, experiment and whatnot. And then you had the two farmers, the agroecological farmer and the conventional farmer. Sorry, it's still in Spanish, but I couldn't figure out how to get into that part of the slide to change the, and I couldn't find my English presentation. Um, so you've got the two farmers, and you're measuring the two farms. And you take all these measurements and, and write them down. Um, so everybody learns from it. And they call it the, the, twin, the twins. You had, a, you had a, like a, kind of like an ugly twin and a, and a handsome twin, right? And they made all these measurements. They took an inventory of all the practices on both farms. Then they measured soil. They measured the... Um, uh, the topsoil, they measured how much humidity was in the soil, they measured the erosion in the soil, uh, whether it landslides, uh, superficial erosion, um, gullies, they measured all of that. And they measured the, the percentage of, of um, vegetative cover, and then they measured the losses, the crop losses and the economic losses. Right? Um, quite a lot to do if you're illiterate, you know. But they did it. And so, um, these are some of the things they said about the, about the process. Vulnerability is the other side of, of the tortilla, of sustainability. It's unprotected, being unprotected from the forces one can't control. And it depends on human practices. Because there was this whole sort of mystique about, this is the hurricane of the poor, God is punishing us. No. <laughs> Society punished us. They, put us up on these hillsides where we shouldn't be farming in the first place. Um, and when the hurricane hit, we were the most vulnerable. Vulnerability is the problem, right? Um.